up of the, uh, what is it, May 15th, 20, 2023 special meeting of the Air Planning Board. Um, our agenda is very simple this evening, is to introduce, interview two candidates for town planner and arrive at a recommendation to submit to our town manager. Uh, I do believe I still need a vote to uh, approve the agenda. So moved. Do I have a second from Jeff? Yes. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. It's unanimous. So first candidate up is, is Mr. Ruiz. Mr. Ruiz, if you would approach the table, please. Hi. This will give Mr. Ruiz oh, a yes, chance. This will make it easier. So quick introductions. Of course, you know uh, myself, Jonathan, and Ken. We also, uh, Jeff Tilson is the uh, clerk, and Julie Murray, and Nathan King uh, to your respectively yes. right and left, left and right. Um, if you would uh, open this, what we're going to do is, uh, as I said earlier, if you would open with just a brief discussion of who you are and why you'd like to be town planner and heir, and then I'm going to let everyone ask questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, Daniel Ruiz, and um, so uh, my experience, uh, for seven years I was a uh, project and permitting develop, uh, manager for a developer in uh, Southborough. I've done work with many planning boards, conservation, uh, zoning board, all different types of boards across Massachusetts and def many different towns. Uh, from there, I went over to the public side in and uh, joined uh, the town of Salisbury as their assistant planner. Um, and my move to the uh, public side was more to um, try and find a way to help towns get the best projects and get what was best for the town and the residents that they have. Um, and the the uh, position for the town um, for the town planner uh, it raised my um, it, it caught my interest uh, when I saw that uh, position opened um, it's a small town similar to the town that I work in in Salisbury it's not a beach town or you know kind of like that but it's got a small town feel but it still has quite a big uh, quite a bit of development in it also has uh, open a lot of open space um, and uh, in, these, in a town like this, I felt that I can make a big impact on the town and its residents, as well as um, assist the town move and moving forward in the uh, direction that it would like to go. Well, thank you. Who would like to start? Nathan, you have that gleam mm. in your eye. I'll, I'll, I'll start with a question. Um, so you've, you've been doing... Uh, Private and public mm -hmm. work. The let's start with something that's hopefully a little easier. But I found that in Massachusetts there is an alphabet soup of organizations, uh, bureaucracies, and uh, what has been you, you for example you when you worked with Capital Group, <clears throat> you worked with various state departments. So um, how? What has been your experience in navigating the, um, the different uh, organizations and how, do you how have you made um, your work with them effective? Uh, so you're talking more of like uh, state agencies like MEPA, DEP. Yeah. Um, so in my experience working with them, um, it's been fairly, uh, fairly easy. They're, they're pretty, well, it depends on the project, I guess, is what you, what I would say. Um, uh, typically, reaching out to these uh, departments, um, you you want to meet with them, go through um, these projects in person. Um, you want to make sure to keep them informed. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth communication with these de uh, these department and state agencies, making sure that they stay informed on these projects because. Uh, as you know, you know the permitting process can sometimes move pretty quickly on, on the planning board and the town level, and kind of moves a little bit slower at the at the state level with those agencies. Um, those uh, so typically you want to try to start those uh, that process pretty early on before uh, a project were to come you know uh, come before a planning board, making sure that they understand that this is something that could be anticipated, um, and uh, making sure that. Uh, you really keep touch, uh, keep communication with them, and, and, and there's various points and throughout the projects that you want to make sure you uh, continue to uh, reach out to them, 
uh, it makes it just makes the the permitting and project uh, through those uh, dealing with those agencies much quicker and easier. Keep going. Uh, do you follow up, or would someone else like to leap in with a different question? Keep going if you got a few. I mean, I I would be fine to do it that way, and I have okay. a few questions. Go ahead. I only okay. have a few, so. Um, so we've just come out of a pandemic. Uh, that's one one bull, <clears throat> one data point. Another data point is I see my role here on the planning board as a 30, 50 year role. Um, and what's gonna what's the town gonna look like? Um, mm -hmm. What what is what do you think is gonna be the most significant change mm -hmm. over the next thirty years for small New England towns? Um, so I think the biggest change for small New England towns is trying to keep the small New England town feel. Um, you know, there's this push towards a lot of condos, uh, you know, bigger developments that, of that you know nature, uh, natural resources being taken down a lot more. So, uh, you know, specifically in the town of Ayr, you know, I know you guys have like 49% of your, you know, of the own uh, the land is is about open space and natural resources so i know that's that's quite a big por portion of the air um town so uh continuing to make sure that that is something that stays around um and uh as well as the the move towards uh green energy uh moving towards uh stormwater uh reducing impervious area, making sure you're using green infrastructure, blue infrastructure, um, those kinds of things to make sure you, you can also do uh, higher density, less, um, taking up less open space, um, providing for that, uh, as well as uh, making sure that there's still economic growth. Um, it's definitely with the pandemic portion, um, it's, there's been a hit on um, retail, uh, you don't you no longer really see these big box stores wanting to go where these big anchors that want to go into these retail plazas because you know now they know on they can use a lot of the online portion you know uh, like Amazon and that so they've redu they reduced a lot of their footprints um, and they found also a lot of companies now can use remote um, means to run their company with less overhead. So you see more of that decrease in industrial, commercial, retail space, and now you're seeing more of the expansion of uh, residential, just because now people are leaving these cities, trying to find the suburbs because they can work remote. So it's kind of that push. Do you have a follow-up on that? I'm good. Um, I, I, I do. Did you do? Oh, yeah, great job. I, I, I got got Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for your interest in uh, uh, well, applying, so for, nice the job, to applying for the job. Applying for the job planner <laughs> here in Ayer. Um, so under the clock, you covered a lot of ground just now, and it's really pretty cool. But you led me the beginning of, your, of the beginning of your response. Talked about the terrible side of density, which is condos and things like that come in. Okay. And how do you balance the terrible side of density? Uh, a project by Pulte Homes, a project by Emmanuel, a project by Toll, something like that, with the economic benefit of having that dense a tax base on that small part, portion of land. So, so how, how do you balance that out? It's, it's, it's a difficult balance. You know, you, you have to, there's got to be some, to keep that small feel like you have for air, mm -hmm. you know, there is a lot of that single, single family of, uh, homes that you want but there's there is the necessity for um m you know multifamily for so that you you want the higher density on those smaller parcels so that you're not taking up as much open space mm -hmm. and um it's it's difficult because you really have to balance the two because there's also you know when it comes to those bigger uh, density uh more uh, affordable housing comes into play as well mm -hmm. Um, and that's a big portion of that as well. You want to push uh, so that there is that inclusion of affordable housing because what you're seeing also is the increase of um, cost on mm -hmm. housing, mm -hmm. which uh, is, it, 
at this point, I don't know how. Yeah, Throwing the word insane at this yes. point. Yes. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, a typical, it's a typical pressure countrywide at this point. It is. In most metropolitan and urban areas like us. So mm -hmm. that's, un, that's I think we understand that. At the table, yeah. So. And especially yeah. now with air in the uh, MBTA zoning as well. But actually, you know, in our um, last interview, you, you had talked about that your guys' zones actually already accommodate for that. So that's. We believe we accommodate, given the, the MRTB, the Montechusa plant plannings, we believe we accommodate it. So, it's not, so yeah, the, there's no real answer to that question. Yeah. Okay, which is good, but the, what is the benefit of, the, of a higher density? Uh, well, there, there can be a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits in the sense of if you had a, a property that's, let's, let's say a couple, you know, five acres, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that, um, you you're decreasing your footprint so you're going to want to go vertical or mm -hmm. mixed use you know something like that so that uh, you're reducing how much impervious area there is how much uh, stormwater runoff there is you know protection of the natural resources in the area so it's a it's a you know tough balance between the two mm -hmm. so uh, it's it's one of those things that you really have to yeah. each situation is is different it, it, not to be argumentative the planning board's job is to maintain the tax base in town and everything you've mentioned is really is a nice nice to have from the standpoint of taxation mm -hmm. can you speak about the financial side of density for me for a minute um yeah so uh t typically on the on the financial portion is uh the amount of units that you have is typically how much the you know the tax base is mm -hmm. you know tax is paid out of those. Mm -hmm. So the more units you have, the more tax base you have. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also kind of make that up with commercial and industrial. Mm -hmm. You know, so that there's there's, there's going to be a balance between that. So you don't want it all. You don't want all of your tax base coming out of residential. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that there's an even spread. Um, where you're getting both, of, both, of, both of, all, of all your commercial, industrial, and residential yeah. tax base. Thank you. May I, if it's okay, I, I know I said I was going to shut up, but follow up. Tell us, how would you feel comfortable in a situation? How would you deal with a situation where we had a proposal that actually met some or met our criteria, uh, was dense, and we had a butters or people, in, you know, uh, show up and say, you know. This just doesn't have our, our air. This doesn't feel like air. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, this is this is this is you know Concord. This is this is Cambridge or something. Not Concord, Cambridge or Boston. How would you respond to that? To a public concern like that? So actually, uh, I can. Uh, we have a project currently before us right now where there's a, it's a less than an acre parcel, and they're they were trying to fit 24 units on it. So it's very very tight, and that was one of their big concerns was. Uh, it was that exact same thing? Was it was too dense? The beach from the fifth floor. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it was. That was the one of the big concerns was dense density. And what we did was we tried to we met with the applicant and we also met with the residents and tried to facilitate a way that we could kind to kind of come to some sort of a middle agreement mm -hmm. in the way. Um, and they've actually now just reduced to units down to 20, accommodating more visitor parking. And um, now um, we haven't had the meeting yet, but at the next meeting we would, we're would we gonna discuss that and go through it with the residents. And so, the, and excuse me for a second. No, go, this go for is, it. This is through the planning board, not through the zoning board of appeals. Correct. Okay, great, thank you. No, it's, it's yours, it's yours. No, I, I'm just curious because when you say we just met. Sorry, the planning no, that's board. That's quite right. I mean, we wear many hats in this room. Mm -hmm. A couple of us are in affordable, a couple of us are in um, okay. CPC, a couple of us are in a lot of different things. Some are in neighborhood stuff, so we wear a lot of hats. So sometimes when we say we, we may be talking not about what's in the room. Mm -hmm. I just want to double check with that. Okay, um, I do have other questions, but if Can you- Can I jump in? Yeah, my question, please do. My yeah. question goes off of that. So I don't think 30 years out, I mean, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I tend to think more immediate. And I won't ask you about the wildlife when they fly through the room. We'll just have to deal with that when that happens. Um, but for Salisbury, if you could, which we know we have a lot of um, constraints as a planning board, right? We can't do everything. But if you could, what would be your planning vision for Salisbury in the next few years? To so for Salisbury, um, as a, so it would be trying to bring in a little bit more of, uh, right now they have this Lafayette and Maine commercial district that's not, uh, they just put in sewer 
And it, as of right now, it, there's a lot of land that's just undeveloped. That's a perfect area to bring in, you know, the commercial and industrial portion to bring in a little bit more of that tax revenue for that portion of the area, as well as uh, down at the beach, you know, there's a lot more. It's all res basically residential down there. And uh, what they're moving towards down there is uh, a lot of people are doing a little bit more condos. Um, so it, it's bringing in an increase of tourism for that area. Mm -hmm. They're also revi uh, we're working on reviving or redesigning the Broadway Mall area down at the beach, which is the beach center area. Uh, so reworking that area to try to bring more people in there, as well as um, uh, trying to uh, make the entrance to the town areas uh, look a little bit more presentable. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've uh, worked on a new design guideline for the Lafayette, Maine, which is one of the you know main corridors that you see in Salisbury, and it it incre it's the, we've added uh, street trees, you know, street landscaping to make it look a little bit more presentable in that sense, so it doesn't just look like all concrete, yeah. and it looks more inviting. Awesome. Um, I only really had one other question, so can I just go for go it, Julie? Because I don't want to keep you up our time. But um, you had talked about working in the private sector and then switching to public sector. So you're interested in this job and you touched on it in your cover letter, but can you say a little more about what keeps you staying within the public sector? Yeah, so um, you know, working in the private sector for seven years, um, it's the, the push in the private sector is really, you know, uh, revenue, you know, uh, making sure that you're getting the, the, the development that you want. Yeah. Um, there's not always that balance of what the town wants and what, you know, mm. what the residents need. And so I kind of got a little burnt out on that side yeah. and come over to the public sector because I wanted to more help the towns get the projects that they that actually deserve. Like, mm. um, I... I try to apply the knowledge that I took from you know the developer side and how they think and what they what they're envisioning for their projects, and try to apply that to how we can look at the project and try to make it a little bit of a better project and work with the applicant on uh, suggesting uh, different things that could still get the same outcome that they want, but it increase it has a better uh, feel for the town and as well for the residents so that they're, you know, they feel like they're on board. Awesome, thank you. I'm good. I'll um, continue. Please, Nathan. So, um, do you see there, we had an imposium a few uh, months ago, actually now, on uh, Devon's, where may, uh, we may absorb uh, part of Devon's in 2033, so there's gonna be a, a 10 year a 10-year plan. Um, we also have recently just completed an infrastructure project on West Main Street, which is adjacent to Devon's, and we've introduced form-based code. Uh, which are you familiar with? Yes. Okay. So um, I anticipate that we are going to get applications for some uh, projects that we are not very experienced with. Uh, as a as a board, maybe maybe, maybe Ken has experience, um, <clears throat> but tight development up close to the street, uh, blends of commercial, retail, residential. Um, what what is um, how are you? Um, you? You say you you know well how the private sector thinks. Um, experience with uh, well. How are you going to help us with these, um, which which potentially may be very challenging because this is the first time our form-based code is going to be exercised in a, in, in a application. Mm -hmm. um, how are you, how are you going to be able to help us through uh, those applications? So, I've never dealt with form-based, you know, uh, zoning for in the uh, form-based code for. In my, in my experience, you know, um, I would definitely need to uh, make sure I understand the ins and outs of form-based code. And, and I, I would have to review the projects in, 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 a, in a way where 
getting possibly uh, some some consultant help to make sure the first one is you know goes smoothly uh, because that's kind of gonna set the you know set the the road for every all the other applications that come in through. So that's gonna be like the most important one and making sure that you I understand everything that there is to do with form based code and how that would a apply to the planning board and how their uh, review of that project would uh, take place. So I, without really reading the zoning and all that information, I don't know exactly how I can. I, to give you a definitive answer mm -hmm. on that, but mm -hmm. um, that would be kind of my uh, how I would attack that. Yeah. Just FYI, we've, I'm sorry, we've, we've, we've had the form based code in the books for a number of years now, but I don't think we've had a single project come under the form based code yet. So okay. it'll be new to us we as well. We have had two. Which ones? Park Street. And you're right, we've had, we've discussed two. One, one got permitted and they never built. Okay. 3 5 Park. Um, Matt? Yeah. So you worked in a bunch of towns. Mm -hmm. um, I know you weren't in the public sector at the time. Can you, if I would have picked the towns that are similar to ours just off this list, Maynard is one, Sudbury is another, Shrewsbury kind of on the line, Hopkinton also. Um, it's not in those towns of the seven you worked in, but I have two questions. What was, you stood up, swung the back, got the home run? And what was, you had to slog through it project forever. And why did that happen? What was the piece that broke down? What was made it successful? Okay. Um, so uh, the first, well, the, the, I would say the slog fest, the okay. first one, that one would be um, in Maynard, uh, the digital headquarters mm -hmm. project, mm -hmm. Maynard Crossing. Sure. So I, I was the project manager and permitting manager on that one. Okay. That uh, took quite a long uh, permitting process that I, before I'd come to the company. Bell Tower Place? Uh, no, uh, Maynard Crossings okay, um, on 17 and 27. Oh, I know where it is, yep, okay. Because I, um, I did the old, one of the old mills in there. Oh, okay. I'm old enough to have done that stuff, but go <laughs> ahead, yeah. So um, that project actually had, you know, been in the process prior to me joining, and mm -hmm. then uh, when we got there, uh, we had redesign. We did a full redesign. So mm -hmm. they had been working on that for like five years, and we did a uh, redesign of the project, uh, which ended up the way it is now. Mm -hmm. um, and what we did, there was tons of meetings with uh, residents to make sure all the residents on those side uh, residential mm -hmm. streets were going to be um, okay with uh, the project. There was, you know, landscaping here, like just rows and rows of landscaping to, for protection and screening. Uh, we talked about uh, lighting. We discussed lighting hours. Um, oh, there was an mm -hmm. O&M plan that went through every single thing you can think of. Um, there, uh, How did you handle the 30 second change in level of service on the road for six <laughs> minutes a day? <laughs> That was, that, was, that was another big thing. How do you, thing. Handle, how do you handle it? Yeah. The, the, okay. The traffic impact. So, and a success. And then in a success, um, Framingham, well. Use I, Framingham, that's I perfectly fine. Framingham, uh, the old Millwood Golf Course. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that one. Yes. Um, we worked with the town of, uh, what, that city town. At that mm -hmm. point, they were still a town. Yep. Uh, Framingham and we worked with the uh, planner in that area and uh, worked with the board and the uh, r residents and come up with came up with a, uh, a development that kept almost 40 acres of open space mm -hmm. and still had 129 units mm -hmm. for an over 55 development mm -hmm. that was that moved pretty smoothly even through conservation and and planning uh, it was quite the it, it was when we came forward with that open space yep. proposal, as well as improvements in uh, infrastructure for water, um, infrastructure uh, updating the pump station, that helped the projects definitely move quicker. Quicker. So was there a single application of some skill set in both of those that got them to the finish line? Uh, yeah, it's definitely working with the residents and the and working with the planning board at that time it's communication making sure you're balancing the two working with all the parties to make sure that you can because one you're not going to make every party happy but you can try to get to as far as you can to make most parties happy mm -hmm. and there's not going to be a hundred percent but it's give and take 
uh, to make sure you get the project that you want and that all the other residents in town wants. Thank you. Ken, did you have a, a oh, question? Ask a question. This is kind of the similar question that I asked when we met last week, and that is, could you explain to the board, you, you, at this particular point in time, you do not have, let's say, a master's degree in planning, you don't have a certain types of certifications, so you're depending on your experience in the private sector, your engineering background, and mm. your experience in Salisbury. Can you give us an idea of how you would get to the next level as far as education and the planning so that you become certified and things like that, which, what you would work towards to get to that stage? Yeah. So um, I'm already actually working towards that. Uh, I have my AICP exam uh, next Tuesday, which is the certification for mm -hmm. planners. It's, okay. it's a certification um, for planners, awesome. and um, it's, it's, it's um, acknowledged all across the U.S. Um, so I'm working towards that, and I know there uh, there was a portion of grant writing in that was raised uh, as well as a question. Uh, I would you know take courses on uh, review, how to you know grant writing, how to do grant writing, um, as well as uh, making sure that there is that there's a lot of uh, um, programs out there that they do uh, public uh, they. Uh, CPTC, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so we did those. Uh, Ruby's there was, in the room. <laughs> there was the one in Worcester that was previously yeah. uh, in March. Uh, so attending those, um, they they also have the webinars that you can do. Uh, so making sure that I stay up to code, you know, up to date on everything like that. Okay. And I'll tell you right now, MRPC is actually hired consultants to help people write grants for their towns. Yeah. We put sixty grand in that just recently because they've got to develop. They have to develop projects to spend their money on, and they found out that people people can't do it. Right. A lot of a lot of grant writing expertise disappeared in the last eighteen months. Um, anybody have other questions? Have a question? I, I, I'm just watching the clock yeah. and time. So, uh, given the few minutes remaining, uh, two things. One is, do you have any? We interviewed you a week ago. Yep. And I was wondering if in the, in the interim between then and now, if you have additional questions about air, this position, anything? Um, no, not, not, not any no. additional questions. Would you like to make a closing statement for the board? Yes. Uh, you know, I, I want to thank, thank you guys for the opportunity uh, to uh, interview for this position. Um, and I hope that uh, my answers were, you know, su su sufficient for your uh, questions, and um, I look forward to uh, hearing you guys deliberate about this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything in our either in the, uh, today or in our previous meeting, anything we overlooked that you feel like we missed that you want to make sure that we understand about you? Anything you want to add? No, oh, well, I think I think okay. good. You know, by the time you get to the end of the sidewalk out there, you're going to be like, oh, damn. <laughs> so, um, you can call Ken. As you heard me say earlier, <laughs> we're, we're going to make a recommendation to the town. Matt, you met Robert uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow. I, I can't answer you when he's going to get that out. I, that I don't know. Okay. But I imagine it's going to be soon. Okay. All right. Thank okay, you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you much, Lee. Thank you. See you well. See you. COVID rules. No, we don't shake hands in church either. I'm not touching anybody. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Are we recording this for minutes or for people? What? You want this on pause? Uh, I think we're rocking. We don't record our other meetings. You guys are the only ones that yeah. rock this recording thing. Yeah. Hi. So, I do it. Nathan. Let me make a, so you remember Jonathan and Ken. Wow, I forgot that was up. <laughs> and uh, this is Mr. Brian Keating. <laughs> nice Jeff to Tilton, our clerk. Mm -hmm. Julie mm -hmm. Murray mm -hmm. and Nathan King. Since Ken and I have had the opportunity to interview you. With the newly elected members of the board. What's that? With the newly, with the first elected, elected members elected, of the board. Oh, yeah. Not Congratulations. Just having fun with Mr. Keating. So, um. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost my, uh, my thing. So the way, what I'd like us to do is this. Uh, just as you had previously asked a, a brief introductory uh, comments from you, just introducing yourself and why 
being town planner, planner and heir interest you. Mm -hmm. And then questioning, I'm going to ask, going to concentrate on the three members who weren't in the previous mm -hmm. in the room previously. They're going to have the, do the bulk of the uh, ask the bulk of the questions today. We uh, have a half an hour, mm -hmm. and as it gets close to the end, I'm going to leave a little time for you to give a closing statement. Sure. Okay. So, uh, with that said, if you'd like to open up and tell us who you are and, and why okay. here. Well, as my resume says, my name is Brian Keating. I've been a resident of Pepperell for the past 17 years. Uh, also, roughly, well, I um, began. Um, my mid-career was spent in education and job training program, uh, youth build. Spent a lot of years um, educating um, and training young adults and disadvantaged young adults in um, challenging towns such as Lowell, Attleboro, Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, then I made a mid-career change and came to planning. So I began with the neighborhood stabilization program in Manchester, which I um, became very familiar with uh, issues such as affordable housing. I um, had moved on to uh, regional planning at the Wanachusett Regional Planning Commission, uh, where I did a CDBG program, uh, again, more housing, and, but also did some public infrastructure. And then um, four years uh, with uh, the city, I continued to work with the city of Methuen. Uh, we're more in a planning capacity in terms of uh, you know, staff planning, but uh, my position being senior uh, senior planner, I worked a lot with um, master planning, downtown development, uh, downtown revitalization projects, infrastructure projects, uh, grant funding, managing the grant projects, uh, even doing some of the construction construction management. So over the years, I've become very familiar with uh, planning and and the development process, and so uh, I am. I'm very interested in taking the next step and becoming a town planner for a, for a small town or for a urban town, <laughs> as you may uh, think it was characterized during our first interview, uh, in a town in my, in my area that I've become very fond of and, uh, and I want to work to develop in a, in a positive direction. Well, thank you. Who'd like to begin with questions? Nathan, please, go right ahead. I'll jump, I'll jump right in. Um, you mentioned you worked with uh, young adults. Mm -hmm. They are going to adopt this country. <laughs> do you think they will succeed? <laughs> I do, actually. I think that the, um, well, I mean, uh, there's a glitch with the pandemic, <laughs> education deficits. Uh, but assuming that um, these deficits are overcome, but I do, I do, I am impressed with the younger generation's um, progressive thinking, analytical thinking, uh, not falling into uh, you know pigeonholes policy-wise, but also have uh, they 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 seem to have a, um, a wider community spirit than I think other past generations have. Interesting. Good. Um, so I saw you worked on a proposal for North Andover's um, commuter rail station, mm -hmm. and I'm not familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of the, one of my primary interests in this town, one is we have a mm -hmm. unique downtown neighborhood mm -hmm. right here on Main Street, and one of the assets is our, our train station, mm -hmm. uh, which could be much different in the years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, if can you describe a little bit what this, uh, what your project is, and then if it succeeds, mm -hmm. what do you think will be the most significant factor? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Well, the project in North Andover is particularly, a, it's a feasibility study. It was a topic that was brought up by the, in a public forum during the master planning process. The city itself is not you know, 100% committed or was gung-ho, was looking for this to happen. You know, just in response to the master plan, it was just to let's get a feasibility st study started and see what it would take to bring MBTA, uh, a commuter rail station to, through North Andover. Of course, there's a station in Lawrence and there's two stations in, um, in Haverhill. Uh, there's something, you know, something. So there, uh, the, the, is it needed? Not sure. The fact that uh, without 
guiding the feasibility study there, the new Amazon uh, distribution warehouse, you know, 1.3 million square feet <laughs> is, is opening there. And, uh, you know, so probably there would be consideration of having a, a station, you know, a commuter rail station mm-hmm. to the to the rear of that, you know, where the where, where it does abut the, the right away the, the the rail right away, but uh, so that was the that was the extent of the project. We just got a feasibility study out, and uh, so I'm not there. I'm back in Methuen, so I, I haven't got the follow up on that. But that was the extent of the project. Uh, where and uh, of course a commuter rail station here. In, uh, in air, I think, is a valuable asset. Of course, people want to get on the train, get it into downtown Boston without driving, freeing up, you know, reducing the, the carbon footprint that way. Uh, and I think if the downtown was designed uh, intelligently, uh, as I'm sure this, the direction it's going, there will be lots of multimodal connections to the rail station uh, and not necessarily needing to build a you know large parking garage you know mm-hmm. to, to 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 be a part of that parking mm-hmm. is critical but um, I think um, um, you, you know looking at ways to um, provide access to multimodal modes of tr- multimodal transportations would be key to to making this um, a, a, a real asset to, to air and the region. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Julie or Jeff? Oh, I go first? No, go ahead. Okay. I would say, I don't, I don't know if I, North Andover or Methuen, but do you have a vision that if if it could be your vision, clearly working within mm-hmm. these groups, that you would like to see for planning for those, either for North Andover or Methuen, that you would like to see? What's, what would be your future vision for, for one, of, one of those? No, for oh, like for either. one of those communities. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm much more invested like, in, in Methuen, of course. Yeah. And Methuen is, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's almost the opposite of Ayer. It's a, it, it's a city that's more like a town as, <laughs> yeah. as opposed to the vice versa. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great description. You know, because, uh, you know, it is bordered by Haverhill and, and Lawrence. Uh, but I would like to see uh, Methuen, and, you know, where I'm working as well, is taking a more progressive um, direction towards, towards development. Now, for instance, I'm working on um, bringing an affordable housing trust to Methuen. Mm-hmm. However, Community Preservation Act is probably a bridge too far. You know, we don't think mm-hmm. with the politics there that it would be, um, that would be um, acceptable. You struck out on, mar- on a marijuana bylaw. You know, so we're looking for ways to, um, you know, bring extra revenue through these, um, you know, creative, innovative revenue generating plans. But um, you know, and and of course, the the course of Methuen, you know, the downtown, like a lot of downtowns, were mm-hmm. spun out, you know, to the highways. Uh, so a lot of effort is going into um, uh, revitalizing our historic downtown. So we've had some success, especially with infrastructure, state grants, mass works, housing choice, shared streets, complete streets, to bring the infrastructure to the point where um, some some economic development can happen there as well. Uh, will we look at, um, <clears throat> you know, other... Um, forms of zoning such as um, you know form based zoning or uh, uh, you know other innovative z- zoning to, to to get that done we uh, we did implement which is a success in Methuen, uh we did implement a 40r we did adopt a 40r um, zoning reg and we're making some great progress towards bringing some um, you know redeveloping some historic buildings which is bringing mixed use and affordable housing to the area, and we have a very large one, hopefully in the pipeline, you know. But we may do that as a 40B, just so we can get our over our mm-hmm. 10%, and then have more control over some other projects that we think might be um, 
coming in. <laughs> that may, but they may not be. You know, if we do it under a 40B, they may not be as friendly as some of our 40R developers. But that's so. Our, our planning department there, and the projects that I'm working on there, I um, I'm more you know, in, using innovative state funded approaches mm -hmm. to bring in, um, you know, a, a revitalized downtown. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You, Jeff. Following up on that, when you say innovative state funded approaches, is it because the community that you're working in doesn't want to put the money up? They are very, they, it's a conservative mindset. No, I mean, the, the town itself, the city, I'm sorry, um, doesn't have a, a large tax base. So there isn't a lot of um, money in the general funds to be, um, you, you know, work, we really rely on Chapter 90 and, and some of these state funds to do projects that are outside the normal maintenance and, you know, road construction projects. There's not too much left over at the end of the year. So what are they doing in there? In So I see, and then said it before, I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. The basis of the planning is to bring funds into the community for mm -hmm. the community to support itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So communities that get in a position where they aren't bringing funds in from their zoning, I, I always ask the question, mm -hmm. we got here somehow, what are we doing to dig ourselves out? Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, what are they doing to dig themselves out of that? Well. I mean, that's why I'm here, <laughs> because I don't see a lot, of, uh, you, you know, other than state funds, and we really try to get the marijuana bylaw passed, um, there's not a lot of movement to generate um, those those revenues, I'm afraid. And, you know, I guess I'm, I just, I'm not familiar with the community at all, so I, I don't know, because, um, okay. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm just in, in reading through that. It, it's an it's an interesting approach. Mm -hmm. um, it, so I keep my opinions to myself. Um, uh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just giving you a hard first time, time ever, right? I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that you work with the MBTA. Um, I'm just going through my notes. No, I didn't work for. I just oh, worked on it on a. Excuse me, strong familiar experience with planning for the drafting zoning amendments to achieve compliance with the new MBTA communi communities law. Oh, the MBTA yeah, community. The MBTA yes. communities law. Okay. I, yes. I'm, yes. I can't read my writing, Ken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Explain, describe. Sure, so as you are all familiar with the uh, section 3A of the 40A of the Zoning Act, um, uh, you know, um, towns that are um, Host a an MBA MBTA station or adjacent to mm -hmm. are required to, um, uh, re, you know, either look at their zoning to see if there is a sufficient number of uh, um, housing units mm -hmm. that are um, by right multifamily mm -hmm. by right, um, or if there's not, we you know towns are required to look at their zoning, um, adjust modify, amend, so that there is, um, you know, multifamily housing by right to the tune of, what is it, 20% of the uh, of the housing units, of the year-round housing units need to be, um, this, it's not a production bar, it's, you, you just need to be able to accommodate, the zoning mm -hmm. needs to be able to legally accommodate mm -hmm. that number of housing. So, for instance, in Methuen, I think we need to show some zones so we were looking at our 40r uh, district but that didn't you know met met the size and it met the um density but it didn't wouldn't the, a build out did not show that it would that it would have um would accommodate the required number of um units so we have to adjust and right now we're in the process of doing that we're in a phase one of a, a technical assistance grant looking at different scenarios um you know, probably combining 40R with a neighboring um, uh, district where multifamily is the one district we have that is allowed by right, mm -hmm. not by right, by special permit. And that way, um, hopefully, we would get there. But uh, it's a long process. Um, we're doing. The, I was doing the same thing in um, North Andover, and they were looking at going down um, on. on um, getting a, a larger commercial zone to be able to um, allow developers there or landowners there to be able to build up 
in, 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 with, in, with the allowed density and get their um, that 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 compliance met. Yeah. Please follow. jump in. So uh, you mentioned with Methuen that uh, you had experienced some headwinds with some things you thought were responsible, but mm -hmm. faced opposition. So I want to say in a general way, um, how do you deal with a situation in which is an initiative which in your best judgment, professional judgment, mm -hmm. is the responsible right thing to do, but faces considerable popular opposition? Mm -hmm. What do we do? What do you do? Mm -hmm. Education, public education, um, um, you know, designing public forums or um, uh, that will um, allow as many people as possible coming into a room and breaking out into workshops, have a panel of, of experts perhaps, you know, going to agencies um, and, and getting experts to talk about the importance of some of these things, for instance, the marijuana, you know. I mean, it is just a, a boondoggle for towns. You know, there's a lot of work to it, but there's a lot of money coming in. But there's, when you have a, you know, we, <laughs> I can point to one person in particular that was so strongly against it. She was a, she's a, you know, you know she's a wonderful neighborhood advocate, mm -hmm. the low-income neighborhood in Methuen, but she is so dead set against it. You know, she almost single-handedly, uh, and there's no talking to her in, in this thing. You know, she's a wonderful person. But um, this she was dead set against, and she brings out her organization, she brings out her voices, and they just say no. <laughs> but I think there's no, that's not to say that education, public education, and um, evidence-based information does not, will not help in, in other situations. So that's where we always look towards. Thank you. Ken, did you have a question? Or I, I'm not sure if this is, we brought this up during the other interview or not, but. And this question is regarding an a typical application. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's a subdivision application mm -hmm. that comes into the office. Do you have a checklist in your mind or, or from your experience of what you would look for for red flags in an application? Mm -hmm. So, how, you know, as, you, as an application comes in, there's going to be, you know, we've got our rules and regulations, we've got subdivision regulations. Mm -hmm. But as a, a, could you rattle off some of the red flags you mm -hmm. might be looking for in the application process? Uh, sure, um, I, I think what you're looking for is um, um, traffic flow. Um, how, you know, is you know where is the parking in the in the in the um, in the um, this term I'm thinking of, the, but the flow of the traffic through the subdivision. Um, <clears throat> does a does a does a does there appear to be conflicts? Between you know, um, if it's on a if it's a budding on a, a main road or, or um, a major road, you know what what are the what 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 are the conflicts there? Are there is there other parking and they, what is the emergency vehicles? If you see some turns or uh, a cul-de-sac or something that doesn't isn't sh allowing um, you know turnarounds or uh, another. Um, Another, you know, of course, if there's slopes and contours and wetlands, almost the first thing we look at is wetlands. You know, um, wh where is the delineation? Have they, where are their markers? You know, did they, does it look like that they're cutting back or cutting too too close to, 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 to uh, the uh, setbacks and, and the buffers? Um, those are some of the things we always look at pretty closely. Do you have an, an engineering background so that you can take a look at a set of drawings, or would you typically? I'm not an engineer, of course, but I am very familiar with looking at site plans. You know, so I mean, I've yeah, always okay. had a, be have a, an ability to read site plans. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the right. Thing. Jeff, earlier you would ask the question about um, a project that slogged and a project that's successful. Yeah. Would you? Want to repeat the question? Please. Do. Okay. In your experience as a in planning. Mm -hmm. On the municipal side, um, I imagine there's are there's a winner and a loser. Mm -hmm. The project that just went straight through, it was great, everyone was happy, mm -hmm. and the project that was a slugfest. Mm -hmm. Okay, as I described it earlier, stepped up first pitch, home run. Mm -hmm. The next one, they just threw pitches and you just follow them off, and it's mm -hmm. a slugfest. Um, can you describe one of each, mm -hmm. the community it's in, what it was, what it was? Mm -hmm. That's the start. Sure. Okay, let's see. Uh, one with, we're, it's in the pipeline now. It's, it was a, um, a um, 
vacant lot we we assembled well we asked through the rfp well i think i sent you yeah, this in the, okay so sent. yeah so that was an interesting one and it's still ongoing because uh, the town owned just a um 0.27 acres of it but there was a very, you know surrounding vacant lots that mm -hmm. were um we asked that the developer was able then through the rfp to assemble mm -hmm. okay uh, he came back in order to make this project work he was proposing 58 units of housing and but it would require uh you know dimensional variations mm -hmm. uh height um and, and density of course um so but the administration was well it would be tough sell zoning but we were pushing through it through 40r okay mm -hmm. now we're again we're asking for him to you know so they had to go back and um retool that you know so that was this is an example of a of a of a more challenging one that okay. we thought would you know Personally, I was looking for it to go through as, as a 40R mm -hmm. uh, because it would have been a, uh, the key to revitalization of our downtown, mm -hmm. uh, bringing that business there. That's still a work in progress right now? Yes, that's still a work. Yeah, right now we we'll, um, retool the RFPs so that they would, uh, we wouldn't have to go out to auction for the property, mm -hmm. but that it would um, not necessarily have to be a 40R. He could come back and, and um, submit a comprehensive permit. Mm -hmm. So, which I think would is probably the better way to go. Would it that, be all residents or mixed use? It would be mixed use. Okay, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, well, 40B, it would it would be, um, that would all be residential. residential. Yeah. yeah, but the 40R. Say 40R, 40, even 40R district sometimes. Right. Well, 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 that right. allows the the. Yes. Uh, but this way, I think you know this is the the path I was advocating because this way I think we'll get over our 10 percent and then, and we see other. Uh, potentially hostile 40 bs coming into town that will, that's going to impact historical space open space mm -hmm. that we would would then be able to control you know mm -hmm. if we get into our um, safe harbor uh, let me see project that went through easily probably the best one i can think of is up in manchester when we did the nsp um, we were able to partner with some neighborhood chodos and we were able essentially to redevelop whole neighborhoods you know disadvantaged neighborhoods um of course the you know there was no opposition um we were developing abandoned properties blighted properties mm -hmm. uh and i think in one neighborhood i'm thinking in particular the um granite street neighborhood there was at least four homes structures that were involved mm -hmm. which resulted in six or seven units of a housing you know mm -hmm. newly affordable housing uh, and I, I think that just that was um, I think that was just a home run right out of the box or whatever and whatever metaphor you want to use okay. it was a very successful project and not, and that was replicated in other neighborhoods in Manchester through the are, use are of those housing. managed by the Manchester for affordable housing now or how are they managed? yes okay. yes yeah so they became public it's public housing truly public housing being managed by well it's not the community. public housing in the sense that they're, they're managed by um, well there was some of these were home ownership Okay. Opportunities that were done through lottery, mm -hmm. uh, but then they were also managed by um, the Chodos up there. So families in transition. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other name's escaping me right now, but okay. uh, there's a there was a neighbor works affiliate up there. Uh, uh, Manchester, works, Massachusetts, or Manchester, New Hampshire. This is Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm not as familiar with the acronyms in Manchester. Right. Well, it's a, it was they started as a neighbor works of. Uh, they're now the neighbor works of southern southern New Hampshire. So, what's the one skill that carries across both those projects that makes them work? Mm -hmm. uh, one skill. Well, I think it's being able to uh, envision from beginning to end. You know, um, I think managing the process, managing the budgets, managing the flow. Um, you know, you're bringing, you're doing procurement, you're doing budget management, you're doing construction management, um, of course, grant management. So I would say the one skill that flows all the way through, hmm, almost financial. I mean, I think, um, you know, budget management, making sure that the, all the pro formas are working and, uh, and uh, you know, that, that would be one skill that I would think um, that, would, okay. that would flow.
I've got an eye on the clock, so we're... Yeah, there's enough time at least for another question. Or, um, I'm satisfied Jeff? at this point. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. I'll do one. Over. Um, I've heard recently we have a 200,000 uh, housing unit shortfall in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, from what you said, um, Brian, you've, you've tried for private, you've tried private route mm -hmm. to um, make projects work. Uh, you see the need, and I think it sounds like you have a good understanding of the public uh, mechanisms mm -hmm. to um, to make the public side work. Um, air is mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, 8,500 or so people, mm -hmm. um, slowly growing. Mm -hmm. um, we've developed a lot of our uh, boundary areas and conserving more of that. Uh, there's real opportunities downtown. Um, an error, I think, in my opinion, could go, it could inflect, especially mm -hmm. uh, post-pandemic mm -hmm. uh, and, and people moving around. Um, what, so I, I, I expect to get more inquiries um, mm -hmm. for projects, uh, applications in the downtown area. How will you, first, what do you, I mean, give you two questions. What do you see happening in the next 30 years mm -hmm. in small towns like AIR? Mm -hmm. And um, how will you, how will your experience both private, public, um, what do you see helping AIR mm -hmm. develop um, uh, to be a, uh, have a sustainable, continue to have a sustainable tax base yeah. and grow? Well, I, I think, the, you know, the key to, to your question is is um, you know uh, zoning reform. So whether it's uh, um, you know form based housing that you know increases density as you get closer to downtown, allowing um, property owners to build up with, with um, you know with mixed use on the with commercial on the first floor or housing above, but then also uh, allowing more. In the in the suburban areas of town or the rural sections of town, allowing more, um, you know, multifamily or two-family or three-family even by right. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to increase the density in on the lots. Maybe if you're, um, you know, those zoning reforms that allow the, that density while preserving open space, of course, and farmlands and and, and, uh, and environmental you know, areas of critical environmental concern, streams, rivers, wetlands, whatnot. I think all the tools are in place. They just need to be accepted more openly by town meetings and by city councils. Um, and I think a, a, a key, um, uh, you know, task for, for, for planning boards and planning commissions are to increase that education, you know, show that this can work. You know, this is where we need to go. I'm going through the same thing in, you know, in Pepperell, uh, our planning board, and I'm on the affordable housing committee there in the CPC. It's, it, you know, people think that their town is special, you know, that development shouldn't happen here, can only should happen everywhere else. You know, well, that's not true, you know. The, the, you know, we the state has been trying to crack this housing crisis since 1969, right, or even before, uh, through different um, you know formulas and funding programs and innovative ideas. We have to get on board, and every town has its responsibility to do its share. Uh, so I think you know uh, the inclusionary zoning. I think it was a good way for air to go. You know, every for every five units built, there needs to be a sixth affordable unit, uh, and that requires. Um, higher density you know building and allowing that that higher density to occur in more in more areas in um, in town you know whether it's through more housing uh, through more residential districts and commercial districts um, did I get to both parts of your question I think so. just how do you attract that private side then if we have the oh, foundation Nathan, I am so sorry but I'm gonna have to cut you off oh. because in respect to the time. So I want to give you time for two things. Mm -hmm. The first is, uh, we interviewed you a week ago. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, in the interim, did you have any questions or comments uh, over that week that you have? For yes, us? I, okay, I, I did. Well, I was uh, one question was the MBTA. Uh, I was wondering how uh, the MBTA community's question, how 
You were, but I happened to be sitting out in the hallway and read your annual plan, and it looks like uh, we made it. We, we have your in compliance. <laughs> we have we have a we in Fitchburg are the two communities at this point that MRP that MRPC is looking at as having met compl oh, having great. been compliant because yeah, everyone else is whether pulling they, the hair out. Whether they <laughs> change whether they change the 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 goalposts might yeah, move. Yeah. But we're f rather fortunate. With well, that. then, uh, what was it? Did a memo come out uh, last month or yeah. two months ago when they said, well, you know, this is really is a housing production. It's not just zoning, you know, so they really want to see some uh, housing come out of this. Um, that's good. And the other question was, um, you know, in terms of the state funded grants, uh, is the is there a one stop? Is, who Who's responsible for applying for the one stop application? Is that Town uh, planner, or if we looking at? I think you would works? be working with uh, Alan Minoy. Remember Alan from uh, uh, Economic and Community yes, Development. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That we would expect you two to work very closely. Mm hmm. Okay. Would you uh, like to make a closing statement? Sure. Uh, okay. Well, again, uh, you know, uh, this I, I'm coming to you hat in hand, not having had the title or the hat on my head as as, as a town planner. But um, I really feel like I've had the, the experience and I've been around it enough that I'm willing and able and very um, knowledgeable of the, of the, um, of the position to, to take this ball and run with it. Um, again, it's, it's been my mid-career goal to be a town planner, mm -hmm. especially in a, in a town where I live, you know, instead of going off into a more wealthy suburb or mm -hmm. into a city, I think this A would be the perfect, perfect fit for me. Uh, I, I think it would be, um, let me see, you know, I bring a wide, you know, not being pigeonholed in, you know, the, the development process, I bring in a wide range of, of skills, you know, affordable housing, infrastructure development, um, some economic development, uh, bring in a lot of skills to this, to the, um, to the development process, to the application development process. All right. Thank you, Mr. Keating. Okay. So, uh, oh, before you go, I just want to let you know next step. So, yes. we are we are challenged to our our job is to come up with a recommendation to Robert, the, the town manager, this evening, and we'll get that to him tomorrow. So that's our job. I can't tell you when Robert will make his decision and get mm -hmm. that word out. I just don't know. Yeah. But I could tell you on our end, we're obligated to give him a recommendation by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much for yeah. coming. Nice thank you. you man. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a Thanks. Good night. Nice to see you. Take care. Thank you so much. I have a thought about our deliberation this evening. And what I'd like is before to go around, before we arrive at conclusions about who we like, I would like to go around the table first and have us offer our observations first. Observations, comments. Do that first, and, I'm get, and then I want to move into the conversation about the deliberation about which candidate, if any, if either. Can we take we a five, five minute break oh, first? Oh, I'm sorry. Can I'm gonna, I ask uh, my question first? Because it doesn't pertain to anyone specifically. But before a break, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Just briefly? Yes. You get, I, I have n no comfort at all having this discussion in a meeting that's going to be broadcast on television and live for everyone to view. Um, so I have no problem submitting my thoughts to um, you directly or to Robert, but I am not, unless you can, Julie, we're after obligated. the break. Yeah, we have to. We have to. We have to. Open so that's fine. OPM. We but have to. Open meeting law means we have to oh, have this meeting publicized, but I think I'm going to refrain from talking, and I will meet with Robert privately one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not in a group of five of us, open meeting law. Julie, we have to have the deliberation. Your your has to be an open meeting. It has that we ask that question, and by law, this conversation is going to be public. And I know it's a, okay. it, it is so a little awkward. So then I'm going to listen and then figure out where I would like to be on that. And 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 I and I actually would discourage you from having a private conversation, Robert. No, what I'd I like not, is to go that's fine. all of us and say, whether it's consensus or divided, like to say this is where we arrived, Robert. Interesting. So okay. I'll follow how it goes. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And we're going to take a, a five-minute uh, break. Okay, we're back. And uh, as I said earlier, what I'd like to do is start by, uh, if we would take turns, offering our observations first before our conclusions or judgments. And I, I want to start with this uh, observation. Uh, one of the things that I've learned is that 
this role is a very much a public facing role. There's no, there's no way around it. And that I'm ver when I'm during the interviews and in my consideration, I'm thinking very carefully among other things, not just their experience and skills and expertise, but how I imagine they would function with the public mm -hmm. and also with other department heads and functional areas within the town hall. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on in my mind. Okay, I'm done. Whoever wants to go next. I'll just jump on that because that's what I was thinking too, is um, and it's hard to judge yeah. how uh, the, the town benefits from a well-run town hall. And it has benefited yeah. from a well-run town hall. And you don't know what the future will hold. Um, you don't know that it'll always be as good a planning board as this planning board. Um, so, um, <clears throat> and, and therefore, got 30 years on it, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're quite committed. So, yeah, I'm trying to estimate how a candidate will handle board changes, and um, and then work with the um, the rest of the principals, as as you said, Jonathan, in our. Um, in our, in our town. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. Mm -hmm. I just want to comment that I think this is the most important decision that we've had to make as a planning board. I agree. Um, you know, we can look at plans and drawings and laws and regulations, mm -hmm. but now we're talking about, you know, a professional career and, and the ramifications of it. So it, I think it's going to, you know, it takes a little, a lot of thought for us to figure this out. I will say also that I'm a little disappointed in the fact that we only had a half an hour. I thought we could have taken a little more time, but if that's what it takes, then we'll have to work within that. Um, and when we did, the, the, the board did not have the ability to, to see what happened in the other interviews. So the board is not completely you know, tuned in to how other questions were answered. But um, in general, I don't know that there was a substantial difference would you say that there was it? There was no. I think. I mean, the, between what happened a week or two ago and I what happened, I think it was today. very similar. We got more detail because we had more time. Mm -hmm. But I think that what you saw is what we saw. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. I, would you agree? I but, think that the main difference between tonight and what happened last week, if I'm summarizing, mm -hmm, tell me please. if I'm wrong, was that we had Dan Van Skelquick at the table with us and Alan Manoy. Mm -hmm. So there was more of an interchange on the engineering side mm -hmm. uh, as far as Dan Van Skalkook is concerned. So mm -hmm. we, there were some more technical questions, mm -hmm. I think, a week or so ago than there were tonight. There were some technical, um, yes. How would you feel the candidates did and the technical was one stronger than the other? I thought so. Yeah, I thought okay. so too. So, I, you don't continue. I don't want, I, oh, I'm, I'm not going to ask which candidates. You so, asked us to go around the table first, oh, okay. so that was my okay. little quick summary. Uh, I will share that I purposely asked my questions about their vision for the future of the towns they work in, um, partly just for what it would teach and us. And they were but, damn good questions. But Thank to you. be honest, they actually both work in my hometowns. Um, so they, they were... Yes. I, was, <laughs> I knew that. I know. Um, so as my mother would say, I will inherit a house in Salisbury. Um, and I spent most of my years in Methuen. So it, it was, um, really? yeah. Yes. Um, so it was helpful for me, ironically, um, oh, okay. as a person with hmm. probably um, less background in planning to hear about the communities and how they were um, shared. So that was a really hmm. um, important question for me as far as how those communities were reflected in those answers. You know, I, I meant to say that I did appreciate the quality of the questions, by the way. Thank hmm. you. Hmm. I, well, we are fabulous. Thank I you. mean, really, it's I, just was, great. Please, board. thank you. I gave my. Oh, you, you went out of turn. turn? Well, I, I know. I'm only kidding you, man. So here's. Um, <laughs> I'm very pleased that when we put together the description of the job, the job description, mm -hmm. and it went out into the ether, that I think we were very clear that we are a. I'm going to use words. A very dynamic town right now got a whole lot going on. We have started to push the envelope on how zoning works, OSRD, form-based code. I think we're seriously looking at changing multi-unit. We've looked hard at yeah. parking. So, so these are new, okay? Um, one of the critique, crit, 
a, a, a criticism I heard a lot in the last few years was unavailable to communicate. Not a good communicator. Yeah. Not an energetic communicator. So I wrote questions in my mind of which personality do I want in the public facing job? Okay. Um, one of the candidates never said the word communication. Led him down the road looking for that answer. Didn't get it. So um, I think the town of Air deserves to have an energetic person who is not afraid of the cell phone, who is not afraid of picking up the phone. And I, based on that, I have made a, a decision. And I, I must say, I've, I have an opinion as well, but I... No. I want to hold off. As, as do I. Do you need to? Okay. Yeah. And, and I have, you know, and I can be a tough person to work with. I can be in people's face, and I understand that. So, uh, you, excuse me for a second. Please go. So ahead. you just reminded me of one question that we did ask mm -hmm. the other day, and it was a question I asked to both of them, and it was an example mm -hmm. of someone. Can, if you recall the question, uh, if, me, if please. a person comes into the office oh, off yes. the street into That's the right. office. And it didn't have to be any more than an addition to your house. Mm -hmm. It could be a big development. It could be in any number of combinations. Mm -hmm. This person walks in off the street to your office. How are you going to handle that conversation for, with that person? And how are you going to inform them of what needs to be done? And then, if you don't have the answer, what are you going to do next? Mm -hmm. And one applicant did give a better answer than another applicant last week. So that was, I didn't have a chance to ask that tonight, but we did ask that the other day. Nathan, Nathan, that with Nathan asked this conversation because at yeah. some point this is a little strange to hear about I think the strengths of different things when so, we weren't so, at yeah. the meeting. So it's something yeah, Nathan asked strange. a question. We're right? like, that's nice, yeah. but yeah. I don't know well, that, the, how that changes my I, answer. I think what happened, I'm just trying to round this off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe in a previous time frame, none of us were involved with hiring a town Absolutely. planner. Absolutely, right. that's exactly, exactly. true. That's so yes. the, the management, the town manager's office, I believe, is trying to reach out beyond themselves mm -hmm. to the rest of us, so they were all involved. So it, it almost as though that the, the conversation could have ended with that other group, mm -hmm. but I think we've all been given a chance now to be more involved, which I think is a better solution. And, and I appreciate that. And one of the things that we do as a planning board, and I'll make this observation because I saw how it used to be and how it is now. None of us are shy about showing up in the planner's office and saying, yeah. let me dig in with you. Exactly. Yep. So that's a large part of it for me also. That's a big deal. And one of the things I heard in, with um, Daniel was, Nathan asked him a question, he didn't know the answer. So I'll have to go find out. Yep. Yep. Mm. That was important. That's the person I typically say hello to. Mm. That opens a door. Yep. For me. So we so I just want to say we are now transitioning from observations now yes. to deliberations. Yeah. Okay, so this yeah. is totally mm -hmm. legit. Um, did, I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jeff. No, did you that's I'm, listen. I, I, I just spent Go ahead. So we weren't three of us weren't there. Can you yeah. name names now for the Yes we can. For how that answering went. So, do you want to go first? Oh, you go. So, what I, I would say is that first of all, one of the things I noticed is that I'm sorry. Yes, before ahead. you jump in, I also see this as a building a team exercise. Correct. You mentioned that before, and I wanted to just say that again. And that was the other piece. Well, it, personalities have to mesh. Well, that leads into what else? Just that's. Perfect. I'm sorry. No, Thank no, no, you. nothing. Sorry, that's a perfect segue. Thank you. Perfect segue because. You know, what I was looking for at here, but also in the previous, like, well, not just like the substance of what they have to say, but how they say it and what the chemistry is or not. And what I noticed uh, was that, you know, Daniel was but with, with uh, Dan and with Alan, with Dan to get into the engineering and there was a rapport immediately with the engineering. And then with Alan, there was a rapport on policy mm. and they connected. And that meant something to me. It's like, okay, you know, I was aware of that. Um, I feel that both candidates are qualified. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's a, so the good news is we have two qualified candidates. Mm -hmm. That's great news. However, in my mind, um, if I were to think in terms of the team, mm -hmm. think about public facing and, and then, then co being able to collaborate, cooperate, and, and resolve conflicts with people in town hall, 
you know, my gut is, it le I'm leaning to Mr. Ruiz, uh, to be honest. I support that recommendation. I move. I, the, what, the other thing I noticed, um, I didn't notice it as much tonight as I did last week, is when Mr. Ruiz came into the room last week, cold turkey, he seemed to grab the room when yeah. he came in. Um, yeah. And I thought that was pretty admirable for young, uh, what, you know, his presence was obvious. Yeah. And his, his diction was obvious to mm -hmm. me last week. Uh, I, was I think I was sitting in the same chair now that I think of it. And his clarity was, was noticeably um, uh, noticeable to me. He has a presence in the room. Um, what's interesting is you were talking about that and as he was discussing and I, he was engaging. Um, you may all remember that he lists an outside activity on his resume. The guy who runs the backfield, the defensive backfield. <laughs> <laughs> it's either a safety or an outside linebacker. Yeah. They're the guy who have to look, adjust, yeah. make the adjustments for the defense. It's just it's a it's, it's a role that you play. You play it with other people, but it's a role that you play with the other ten guys or ten people on the field. So, you know, I it represents a change from the past, which I think would be welcome. Neither candidate's going to understand our paperwork how our processes work. They both have worked in municipal, so they understand mass general law. Yes, they don't right. know our regulations. They don't know our bylaws. That's quite all right. That will come with time. Exactly. Um, and I think Mr. Ruiz worked with a permitting process, permitting package called Citizenscape, where I forgot the name of it. Mm -hmm. So there was a software package in his background, and I know we're trying to move towards that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, how, how do we get people to be more successful in the team without having to have face-to-face -face all the time. And Dan is working on that. Um, his predecessor, Mr. Wetzel, started the process. So I think that's going to be an opportunity for the town also going forward. And adding to what you just said, that actually came up in the previous meeting. That, that and I think Alan, it was either Alan or Dan brought up this idea that, of, that the town is moving to more sophisticated streamlined mm -hmm. communications in, yeah. in real time. and. Daniel was already familiar with the kind of technology yeah. he was talking about. Yeah. And, nice. and as an example, Charlie goes out and does a, uh, the first inspection. He fills it out electronically, or the office does. That then tells people who have a to-do, it's on your list now. It's now on the It list. used to be we get together on every other Tuesday and we talk about how we're going to get it done. And what, what we've discovered is, what they've discovered is it's more efficient, it helps the applicant. If there's a problem, the applicant is informed of it. It just keeps the ball rolling and you're not, you're not constantly picking up trying to figure out where you are. So with that said, I will. So I think I heard, yeah. so, th so far three of us, if possibly can leaning toward Mr. Ruiz. Did you, Nathan, did you have a leaning one way or another or uh, some thoughts? <clears throat> Let me make one more point and then I'll, <clears throat> I'll like, get there. Um, air uh, is, one of the things that Mr. Keating said uh, was to, and, and he's also familiar with um, the law and the, the public sector, how that works, that we need to put in place, towns need to put in place zoning, uh, you know, the MBTA communities um, <clears throat> act needs to be put in place. Air is there. You're not perfect, but we just went through a big budget town meeting, we, we were, were able to purchase a fire truck, we're able to fund our own bridge. Um, we aren't, AIR is positioned with form-based code. Um, AIR, is, AIR is positioned with a healthy budget with CPC monies. Um, my point is that we, we don't need somebody to come in and put legal infrastructure onto us or to dig us out uh, mm -hmm. of, of um, deep financial holes mm -hmm. where, where, where the downtown has gone to the mm -hmm. suburbs. Um, air's ready to move. Sorry? Air is ready to move. Air is ready to, as you said, mm -hmm. dynamic. I, th I, th I think air is at an inflection point um, for, for, uh, for density and for um, uh, um, bringing in, I think, I think uh, 
smaller businesses, not the big boxes, right? But smaller, smaller businesses uh, and more um, residences. Hopefully, not all single <laughs> bedroom uh, residents, but I, I, I hope for mixed communities. Um, so I think um, that said, you know, we need we need energy. Um, we need to be able to communicate. Um, there, we will need uh, help to implement these laws and, don't, and regulations that are in place. Mm -hmm. um, that's where uh, somebody experienced in the public sector may, may, may have uh, edge. Um, but I think the, the tilt is, is the other way. To, um, to the skills that, that uh, Mr. Ruiz brings. Okay. Um, I'm hearing a consensus is it, it would to, for uh, recommending Mr. Ruiz to, 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 to Robert. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Um, what I don't know is if a formal vote is required for the recommendation. I move that we recommend Daniel Ruiz. We might as well do it this way. To, to be offered the position of uh, town planner for the town of Air. Or uh, may I offer a friendly amendment? Of course. That we recommend to the town manager. I move that we recommend to the town manager, Mr. Ruiz, be offered the position of um, town planner. I'll second that. Rest. We have a second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. We have a unanimous consensus to present to Robert. Um, I'm not sure if a formal document is necessary. I will write to him tomorrow and I'll say to him, if you, if you require something more formal, I will, of course, uh, uh, compose a, a memo or letter, but I'll certainly let him know of, uh, uh, of our recommendation mm -hmm. immediately. And, and in every situation, if I may, please, in every situation when you're working with a, new, with a possible new candidate for any position, there's going to be a give and a take along the way. Sure. That's all. We, we have limited information to make that decision, and I think you do the best you can, and you make it work. So, well, There's going to be a learning curve for all of us. There's it always a learning be. curve on our side and their side. Absolutely. I don't have anything to learn. <laughs> I, I feel... Maybe humility. I feel really? very confident <laughs> that, that Robert, Carly, Dan, and, um, and Alan, and I'm sure the others are, will be more than happy to help get our town planner up to speed. And certainly we will, I certainly will be absolutely be available to our new town planner. Fantastic. Um, and I suspect others may want to join in that as well, because uh, yes, there are a bunch of bylaws and regulations to go through. We have to bring them up to speed with the projects that we are currently involved in and what's going on. There's work ahead, mm -hmm. but I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling optimistic. You know, it's interesting. I'm optimistic too, because we, want, we came into this process um, I've spoken to a handful of towns and a handful of communities in this area, and they're all struggling to find planners. Mm. And when Robert said to me a few weeks ago, we've half a dozen qualified mm. applicants, well, I was very encouraged by that. Yeah. 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 I just, I think Air is well positioned. I do too. You guys have done an amazing job. Uh, I also just want to say I was really impressed with the quality of questions that you all asked. Thank you. Uh, it was great. Um, if there are no other additional comments, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Was there nothing else on the agenda? I don't that's know. It. That's it. Okay, that's exclusive. Cool. There are thing, yes, that's it. I want to restrict it to the formal I agenda. I just didn't bring the no, agenda. There's nothing, with me. There's nothing thank you. There. Mr. Chair. Meeting adjourned. Everyone, thank you very much for your contributions. And thanks, uh, see you next week.